Hi everybody, welcome back to Plum Figgy. This is Tammy. All right, so another uh, project share to um, be available in my Etsy shop. Uh, I'll like everything out every other time. I'll have the link to my Etsy sh to this in my Etsy shop in the description below. But first, I want to say thank you to all of my wonderful uh, subscribers. Uh, all of the people who have been supporting my Etsy sh um, shop and this channel. Uh, you know, you guys leave the greatest comments. I, It warms my heart every time I get uh, such wonderful comments and just feedback. And, um, you know, in, even in my shop, like, I can't tell you how much... <laughs> You have made me just so grateful for you. Uh, all the feedback from the orders that I've had lately. I mean, I can't even put into words how special that is. So I just wanted to say thank you. And um, you guys are you guys are pretty awesome. Pretty great, great, pretty great community we have here for junk journals. Okay, so you're gonna get this happy stuff out of the way. <laughs> uh, but you know, truly, I, I. I wouldn't do this if I didn't love it, and um, the fact that other people love it um, right along with me, uh, and just the amount of support that uh, we have in this community, it just, it really, it's it, it's very heartwarming. So, <laughs> thank you again, um, and yeah, I can't say enough. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so this is kind of a new fun um, fabric that you haven't seen before because I just got it and um, I yeah I really love this journal it's fairly simple um, uh, what we have here is a sari silk ribbon um, it's kind of like an ochre color so kind of a mazy gold um, and then I don't know what the design is it's, um, looks like maybe Gee, I really don't know. I don't know what the design is, but uh, so sorry, silk ribbon closure, and then the front um, and inside are both fabric. Uh, this is an upholstery fabric on the inside. Actually, I think this is also. Um, it's kind of a linen though, uh, with obviously the script is uh, part of the design. And then, um, as you can see, I kept all the edges around the outside. I wanted this to look very vintage and old, um, so there's still uh, frayed edges, but it's very secure. I've gone around the outside edge of each section and did a straight stitch around, and then around the entire width, uh, perimeter of uh, the journal, I've done zigzag stitches, um, and, and then... Uh, on top of all that, I've added this cheesecloth. Um, it kind of sandwiched in between. And I really love how this turned out. I'm going to do more like this because um, it was fun. <laughs> so um, I didn't add any decoration to the front. Uh, if you felt like you wanted to, you certainly could. Um, I just thought that the script was so awesome. I didn't want to really kind of mess with that at all. So... So yeah, all right, so let's get into it. Um, as you can see, I've got a pocket on the front and the back cover. Um, other than that, there is no, um, and my shirt matches, <laughs> that's funny. Um, there's no decorations in here whatsoever. So this is a naked journal. Um, but the uh, cover, or the, the pockets here, this is a fabric. It's a uh, navy and white or navy and cream, I guess, ticking fabric. And then on the back side is like a file folder. Um, so this, this weight file, it's, this is actually the file folder it came from. <laughs> so one thickness of this, and then, um, I did glue the, uh, fabric down to that and then I stitched around the perimeter so it's not going anywhere um, and then it is stitched into the the cover so all right so and yeah this is an upholstery fabric here it's kind of like a grayish cream color I don't, it's all kind of matchy matchy with uh, muted creams and um, as you can see, I've used some of the papers that were coffee dyed that I had used in my fall journals. So I guess as far as the colors go, it might kind of be fall-ish, but I wouldn't call this a fall journal. I would just say that this is a, 
a journal that's got really interesting pages in it. This is a new one. Um, this is, um, I picked up some rolls of this, uh, um, you know, if, if you're taking a lie detector test, I don't know if that's what this is from, but, or maybe like an EKG and it does the little lines with the needles. That's what this paper is. So I'm going to start including this um, paper in the, my drunk journals because I think it's fun and it's just really interesting. So I have that in here. I'm sorry, as I'm trying to put this away, I'll just set it there. Okay. So, and it is a little bit curly, but, um, It'll uh, flatten out as you use this more. It's kind of thin. I just really like it. I think it'd be fun to write on. Um, and then here we have some um, coffee dyed parchment paper. Um, and yeah, just like thinner, thinner um, pattern paper. Uh, this is some just plain old notebook paper that's been coffee dyed. And then the coffee mixed with the blue lines in the um, notebook paper. I don't, it, for whatever reason, maybe this brand, I don't know what it is. Um, it just turns it kind of a green color, blue and, um, blue and yellow make green. So maybe the yellow in the, uh, uh, coffee is turning it this green color. Now it's interesting. I've been doing some tea dyeing yesterday and today, excuse me. And, um, I've done some of the tea dye on this exact same paper and instead of turning green, it's turning blue. So I guess there's not as much pigment in the tea. I don't know. It's interesting. And then um, here too, you can see there's kind of hints of pink. Maybe not so much on that page, but um, here you can see hints of pink. That is the coffee. Um, and then I put baking soda in my coffee. I think having a reaction with the dye in the pattern paper. And so then this is transfer. So anyway, it's really interesting. And it just, it left really interesting, um, just patterns and designs all over this paper. It's very, very grungy looking, I would say. So yeah, it's just a lot of this kind of paper. And then here we have some calligraphy paper in the middle. So yeah, a blank journal. Uh, with a lot of really interesting papers. So, this is some vintage uh, ledger paper here. Um, and it's got five signatures. And here we have, this is actually dye. It's um, distress stain. And uh, on some book page that was from that Danish book. I, uh, this is a table of contents um, page. So, Really, really interesting uh, way that this all kind of came together. So yeah, and like this, like I, I couldn't bear to cut any of this off or tear any of this off on the edge. So the edges are very, um, I don't know, cascading. And I think that just really adds to the interestingness of this journal as well. Just, it's so very cool. So, um, and here we have a more modern ledger and, um, I have coffee dyed this as well. Um, I did take off more of the modern part of it or, you know, I, I tore that parts off. So yeah, I just, I love how this coffee dye turned out. So, um, this was a quick and fun one to make. I, the, I pretty much just kind of had all these sitting on my desk, um, waiting to be put away. And I thought, Oh, you know what? I think I have enough here to make another journal out of. And so that's kind of what I did. Um, so here we have some, um, patterns of how to make lace. It's from a magazine, I guess, um, you could have subscribed to, and it tells you how to make lace. So there's some patterns from that. Here we have some, um, uh, packing paper, <laughs> some more uh, modern ledger, and then this is obviously modern stationery. Um, I think I got this from the Target dollar spot maybe a year, a year or two ago. I can't remember exactly. Um, and this is some vintage uh, notepad, notebook paper. Um, so yeah, just a lot of really fun, interesting textures, and um, you know, I just this would be a really great writing journal. There's tons of space to write in here. Here's a book page from, uh, I want to say it might be 
Better Homes and Gardens um, gardening book. Uh, it's just basically just different plants in there about them. Uh, and again, I just kind of had it sitting on my desk, so went ahead and used it. Here's another uh, page from that book that's had the ink dye. And this is some scrapbook paper from Seven Gypsies. So yeah, I'll just kind of quickly flip through. Um, there's a little bit, like, there's a little bit of this kind of stuff, but really it's going to be notebook papers, plain papers, or just dyed, um, scrapbook papers that have somewhat of a design, but not a lot. So, and this one turned very pink. So I, I really do think it's the green. Um, I seem to see that when I do it on green. Okay, so here's that more modern ledger. I think this would be really cute if you just covered this with, um, actually I might just, I might find, uh, I have some, actually here, I have some coffee dyed paper that the, this side is good, but then the side has some printing. So I'll go ahead and, um, cover this up with this so that this is more usable space here for you. So you don't, unless, I don't know, I'll cover that up. This isn't all that interesting. You know, a, a journal like this, I want it to look <laughs> old and vintage, right? So, um, gotta get rid of the modern stuff out of there so much. So, um, and yeah, some calligraphy paper here. So lots of greens, lots of, uh, tans and golds. Um, and um blues i guess on the cover so that's this journal um and like i said i will have this available for sale in my etsy shop uh, and the description will have a link to that um below and yeah so i've been busy this last two days kind of i'm trying a different technique for dyeing the papers and I'll be honest I kind of love it um, it's kind of a mixture of several youtubers videos that I've seen lately um, where you kind of just spray it and leave it in layers and um, you don't have to use your oven and there's a couple reasons why I like it a I don't have to babysit it, so that means I can do other things while I'm waiting for my paper to be dyed. And B, putting it into the oven gives it a really nice crinkly sound, which is nice. But then sometimes it can get a little bit too brittle, and I think it uh, disintegrates the paper, and it then is just not as sturdy. And um, leaving it to dry, leaving it to dry on its own without introducing heat. Obviously it would be best if you had a dry heat. Um, I don't have that right now with the weather. Unfortunately, it's kind of, uh, cold and rainy today, but, um, uh, it has a different kind of feel. It's soft almost. So, uh, there's less work involved basically. Um, and yeah. And, uh, I can go ahead and do this, spray some papers, leave it all day or leave it overnight and come back um, in the morning or after work and kind of rearrange them a little bit so that they can dry. You don't want to leave them that way forever because then you're going to get moldy um, and obviously that's not the goal. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, I might uh, show a video of that if that's interesting to you guys and you want to see my little process with that, um, let me know. Um, I'll happily shoot a little video of it, um, and kind of show you what I'm doing. But anyway, sorry, on a tangent again. <laughs> um, if you're still here <laughs> and you haven't clicked off yet, I'd love it if you would subscribe, uh, leave me a comment or a like, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye.